One of the biggest issues plaguing Roblox developers is a mindset issue known as skill bias. Skill bias is where you start to think that your development skill is the most important thing in making a game when it is not. This happens to builders, modelers, scripters, UI designers, animators, anybody who is working on Roblox games who is a specialist or who highly values one skill tends to get skill bias. So when you're a dev, you build your skills up. And oftentimes this includes focusing very heavy on one particular skill. Usually that's what happens. Devs become specialists. They become very good at scripting, very good at building, very good at modeling. Most devs are builders. The reason is the way that Roblox Studio is set up is it puts building front and center. You see the building tools right there when you open the program. So it becomes very easy to start building worlds, right? It's a lot of fun too. Now the problem is when you're just a builder, when you're just focused on making maps, how does that make you see development? Well, now it makes you go into games like Grow a Garden or Steal a Brain Rot or any other game on Roblox, Frontlines. And you start thinking that what makes that game successful or not successful is how it looks. How good are the graphics? Is it RTX on quality? Is it super, super good looking? Right? And that starts to become how you define a good game. This is builder's bias. Builder's bias is the most common form of skill bias that Roblox developers suffer from. And I see this not just in devs, but also in players. Another reason why builder's bias is so common is that it is the most apparent thing when you join a game. Builds and the map are thrown in your face the second you join any Roblox game. You see the way that the game's map looks. You see the way that the world looks. So naturally, when devs are looking to analyze the success of a game, they look at the design, but not the game design, which is like the thinking behind the game. They look at the visual design. They look at the graphics. So now most people, not just devs, think that a game like Frontlines is a better game than Grow a Garden because it looks better to them, right? It has very realistic graphics. People were saying, oh, this is Call of Duty, except on Roblox. I remember that whole fiasco when it came out. It was a very big thing. But then the game died, right? It died within weeks of launching. Why did a game that is apparently so good die so fast? Why is that game, why is Frontlines not at the top of the front page, but Grow a Garden, a game that people like to say has horrible graphics, is? Hmm. Something isn't adding up. If building is the most important thing in development and graphics matter more than everything else, and that's what defines a quality game, clearly something is incorrect. Because this is incorrect. Builder's bias is a bias. The most important thing is not how the game looks. It is how fun it is. And how fun it is depends on how well the game taps into player psychology, how well it taps into game design principles. So in reality, it is not graphics and building that is the most important thing in development. It is game design, marketing, and player psychology. This is a hard pill for most people to swallow because it forces them to look at some what m most people consider uncomfortable truths about development. That games that tap into dopamine, that games that tap into monetization very well, that games that have techniques to hook you in and hold your retention are what become successful. Meanwhile, games that focus super heavily on graphics, like Frontlines, usually fail because they aren't focusing on those things which define a fun game. Players are the final judge of a game's value, of a game's worth in the market. And the reason that Grow a Garden, that Steal a Brain Rot, that 99 Nights in the Forest and other games are at the top, the reason these simple games are succeeding is not because these players are dumb and can't recognize creativity as many people would like to say, it's because those players actually want to play those games. And the reason for that is they are well designed. They are designed to give the player a good experience psychologically. But when you're stuck in builder's bias, like most players and devs are, when you're stuck in this hobbyist mindset idea that graphics come above everything, which people associate graphics with passion very heavily too, by the way, you don't understand what makes a game successful. You have the wrong lens. Strategy first devs recognize that a good game 
truly is what the market defines as a good game. What do players define as a good game? What are players rewarding with their playtime, with their visits, with their Robux? That is what I'm going to look at and define as a good game as a serious strategy first dev because I am a pragmatist. I'm focused on what works. And if we take away our subjective opinions of what makes a good game and we just look objectively, as objectively as possible at what makes a good game in the market, what makes something that people want, we see that Grow a Garden, that these top games are tapping into this. And the fact of the matter is people want simple games that tap into player psychology, that have a fun, simple core loop. Games that have mechanics that keep you coming back, like your garden growing overnight, which is truly a retention mechanic. People will say, oh, tapping into player psychology is manipulative. Being a businessman is evil, right? They're stuck in this subjective, emotional, moralizing way of thinking, right? Which is all in the hobbyist mindset side of things. And this way of thinking clouds their view of development. It makes it so they, they cannot, they literally cannot see what makes games successful. You want proof? I saw a comment recently. My editor will put it on screen. It was on this video that I posted about whether or not Roblox development can be a viable career. And this guy said that he saw this dev forum post where countless devs were complaining that the passion projects they worked for years on were failing, and they were blaming all the low quality slop, as they call it, for why their games were not successful. So as you can see, they have this victim mindset, right? They're saying, I'm a victim. I'm a victim of all the slop and horrible cash grab games, filling the front page, taking away players from good devs like me. And when we really put this under a microscope, it becomes clear that most devs are just coping, right? These devs, they're trying to put up this ego protection when they see games succeeding. Instead of saying, okay, grow a garden or steal a brain rot blew up. Let's analyze why it was able to reach 20 million player peaks and break Roblox CCU records again and again. Instead of doing that, they say, oh, this game is just slop, right? They just label it. Slop is not a fact, okay? Slop is this ego protection mechanism that devs have. They label games they don't like as slop, so they don't have to admit that their games suck. Yes, their games suck in the eyes of the player. The players do not care about your passion. The players only care about the end result. They only care about the game that they see. And if they don't like what they see, if they don't like what they play, they're out of there. They're gonna leave. They're gonna go play something they actually like, like Grow a Garden. Sitting here calling these games slop is one of the biggest epidemics I see among devs. And this makes most devs fail miserably, right? And the better approach is to become strategy first. The better approach is to make simple games. That doesn't mean you just make cash grabs. It means you make games that don't take too long to create. It means that you throw a lot of things out there, throw a lot of stuff at the board and see what sticks, right? And you're gonna find that some games get better results than others. If you're betting everything on one passion project, it is a bad strategy. Why? Because you're betting everything on one move. When you're betting everything on one game succeeding, you greatly reduce your odds of success. It, it's very simple. You throw more out there, there's a higher chance something sticks, that people enjoy it. But to hobbyists, they have no concept of this. They think if that you aren't following your builder's bias and you aren't spending five years to make your project, that you just don't care about your game. All you want is money, right? It's either or, it's either a cash grab or it's a passion project. It's either one week game, low effort, low quality, garbage, slop, or it is high quality, takes long to make, hard work put into it, five year development process, passion project, gold. This is a false way to think. This is a false dichotomy because you can put passion into any project you make, no matter how complex it is. Passion is truly a subjective thing, right? You determine what you're passionate about. So you can be an artist and a businessman at the same time. That is the mind blowing concept that these people cannot get through their thick skulls. They cannot get this concept through their heads. You can make a game that is simple and you can love that game at the very same time. You can put effort into the 3D models at the same time, but you can cut all the fat and the complexity and the open world map and the RTX on graphics that you don't need to succeed in the Roblox market as proven by games like Grow a Garden, Steal a Brain Rot, etc. And you can do very well. In fact, you will do better. Most devs don't have the resources, they don't have the team, they don't have the money, they don't have the leverage or the capital to make complex games. 
And that's fine, right? Nobody should expect you to. Nobody should expect you as a new dev who just started two weeks ago to be able to make the next jailbreak. But that's what everybody expects of themselves. That's what everybody expects of you because otherwise, oh no, you're just a soulless cash grabber. You're just a soulless cash grabbing dev. This is a false way of thinking, right? Focusing on making money, there's nothing wrong with that. If you're an adult, or if you have any concept of what it's like to be an adult, right? If you know that an adult needs money and they need to be able to pay for food and shelter and be able to keep the lights on, then you understand why money is an important thing to focus on. It doesn't mean it's the only thing, but money is a requirement to live in this world. So there's nothing wrong with focusing on making money. It is essential for survival, but it isn't just essential for survival. It is essential to thrive. When you focus on making money, you can also build a business. You can build a developer team. You can pay devs, voila, to make better games that you couldn't make on your own or would have taken forever to make on your own. You cannot just afford to keep the lights on. You can build better games on Roblox. You can even build your passion projects. Would you look at that? That is an insane idea, isn't it? But for hobbyists, this is just absolutely unfathomable. Their brains will not allow them to compute this information that I'm saying right now. That's why that dev forum thread exists. That's why most devs are hobbyists. They just don't get the information. They don't get the program. They haven't gotten with the new way that Roblox development works. They think Roblox is still just powering imagination when Roblox is now powering business first, then imagination powering strategy first, then passion. So accept it, right? It's not the death of creativity. It's not the end of Roblox. It just means you need to take on a different approach in this modern day. Things change all the time in how YouTubers have to operate and how TikTokers have to operate. Audiences change, memes change, times change. Things change in the world. Human society changes. You just have to accept it and evolve and adapt along with it. That's how humans have survived for millennia. That the only way that we're the apex species on, on planet Earth is because of our ability to adapt, because of our intelligence. It's the same thing in the modern day. You need to use your intellect. You need to use your strategy first thinking to get ahead in the Roblox marketplace. It's just part of the process of Roblox changing. And if you're ever gonna compete in this marketplace, you need to become strategy first. So. Join Scripting Secrets below if you want to learn more about the Strategy First Mindset. I'm going to be dropping all kinds of Strategy First lessons are dropping as we speak. I truly believe this course will change how you approach Roblox development forever. It will improve your career if you take action on the information inside. You'll also learn scripting. It's one of the best, fastest ways to do that and to get especially a good understanding of the basics. So join that below. I'll see you inside. Click this video here to learn even more about the Strategy First Mindset, and I will see you next time. Peace.